I can see Shaila's joined us on here, which is really great. I'm so happy you could join us, Shaila. Um, can you share your screen? Yes. Um, I'll introduce you in the meantime. So this is um, Professor Shaila Sultana, uh, a, a long colleague and friend from the University of Dhaka. Um, she's widely published on critical post-humanist applied linguistics, um, um, problematizing the use of English in post-colonial contexts and on language and identity. Today, she's going to focus on digital space in Bangladesh during the pandemic. Over to you, Shaila. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. And uh, the title of my presentation is Digital Space in Bangladesh during COVID-19, Space of Creativity, Criticality, and Bigotry. Um, at first, I'll give a bit of background to my research, and then uh, I'll mainly try to focus on the research findings in relation to nationalism and religionism in digital spaces of Bangladesh during COVID-19. So the main objective of uh, today's presentation will be to present diverse uh, digital discourses um, from sociolinguistically unexplored sources in Bangladesh, such, such as uh, comments from YouTube. Uh, I will try to cl critically explore the language practices, which I will define as translingual practices later on, and draw attention to violence, uh, intolerance, uh, and injustice that are very much obviously present in digital discourses during COVID-19 and try to understand how these digital spaces in fact become um, uh, uh, the active sites for questioning, for understanding, reproducing, or challenging violence, intolerance, and injustice. So all of you know about uh, the effect of COVID-19 across the world and Bangladesh being a very small developing country with a high density of population in fact has experienced um, lots of issues specifically because of its poor economic condition, inadequate medical facilities and lack of awareness about personal hygiene and mental health. And um, what we have observed during COVID-19 is this, there were lots of issues in relation to sadness, depression, worry, anger, traumatic stress, nervousness amongst the people of Bangladesh. And this have occurred, um, as we have observed, for social distancing, isolation, job insecurity, uncertainty, and financial issues. And people did have very limited uh, access to medical facilities uh, during that time. So during this period, different use of varieties of linguistic resources and patterns of writing, videos, uh, screen grabs, different types of memes, these were also very much uh, widely used in digital spaces for showing violence of different forms. And we have observed women have become uh, one of the main target of um, uh, digital violences, for example, um, and these, uh, you know, these violences were caused by different types of personal relationships from their boyfriends, friends, and relatives. And it also has increased uh, different intimate partner violences. Um, for example, they were, you know, stalked, they were harassed, they were monitored, and they were surveilled um, by different people. And social media space were used to be connected with like-minded racists. And uh, you know, it, it was used by these racist people to create a sense of fraternity. Um, and they serve the interest of the vested political and economic positions and disadvantaging others. Uh, fake news uh, were used, videos were used, and these, uh, you know, these were used to show toxic masculinity, nationalism, and religious fundamentalism. For example, uh, this, is a, this is a very pertinent example during COVID-19, uh, after the outbreak of uh, Wuhan and the ensuing lockdown, we see lots of multilingual xenophobia surfaced on YouTube uh, and Twitter uh, and um, Instagram. Uh, for example, China was termed as Bogland and Chinkland, and Chinese as chings, chankoro, chinazi, gooks, insectoids, and multilingualism can thus add new dynamics. It was uh, identified that multilingualism can become a source of hate discourses, and uh, multilingualism can be a, um, a way to spread panics, anxiety, and insecurity. And it, they can be used for promulgating violence, intolerance, and injustice. 
So translingual practices usually in social linguistics, it, it, it has been always, you know, positively addressed and people, um, you know, specifically in recent time, translingual practices have been, um, you know, identified as a source of creativity, uh, as, a, as political acts that allow the community members to stand for the linguistic rights. And translingual practices have been shown that, you know, the people have transnational literacies and they can show that through the legitimate use of translingual practices. However, during the COVID-19 and, uh, you know, in recent times, it has been observed that the presence of translingual practices in society does not always mean that, you know, linguistic, cultural, political, or, you know, religious justice have been, uh, you know, established through these translingual practices. But by contrast, in fact, linguistic, cultural, political, religious ideologies, in fact, can be um, incorporated, can be enhanced in digital uh, spaces. So keeping this, um, uh, these uh, um, aspects in mind, on the one hand, translingual practices can be a source of creativity. On the other hand, translingual practices can become a source of um, you know, uh, violence, source of nationalism and religionism. Uh, I have explored um, uh, digital spaces and I, I don't want to spend much time on methodology, perhaps uh, during the question answer session, I can talk about it. Um, and I'll go straight to the data. Uh, in this uh, YouTube uh, section, we see that how religionism and nationalism and gelotry, uh, in fact, um, are enhanced in digital spaces in Bangladesh. And this specific YouTube, uh, in fact, um, had drawn lots of um, attention and during COVID-19. The digital conversation occurs under a video available as a public post on a YouTube channel available in a public domain. Uh, and you, we, we, I have to uh, tell that during this COVID-19, there was a series of Islamic wars may feel uh, occurred. And uh, all these clerics claim that different forms of, uh, you know, different forms of ideological statements. Uh, during the pandemic, certain religious preachers uh, started giving wars or sermon regarding the do's and don'ts uh, in lifestyle according to their own individual interpretation of Islam. And these speeches themselves, in fact, uh, spreaded uh, racist claims. For example, uh, Italy, these are all, in fact, uh, data drawn from this YouTube uh, comments. Italy is a breeding ground of corona, since it is a land of atheists and homosexuals. Coronavirus is a punishment for the Chinese as they mistreated the Uyghur Muslims. Iran will be destroyed by corona because it distorts Islam. Bangladesh is considered as safe as it is the only country in the world where Islam is extremely extensively practiced. We also see uh, traces of religionism in this um, uh, in this YouTube comments. Uh, for example, Corona is punishment from God as humans have failed to maintain religious lifestyle. Uh, there are also provocative comments made by the cleric in which they claim that rape has increased as was Mayfield has been closed for a long time uh, because of a pandemic. Uh, lots of uh, vocabularies um, surfaced during this time which show that um, uh, you know, how nationalism and religion, in fact, were increased during that period. And uh, the comment, the interesting is, thing is that, uh, you know, these comments were supposed to critique the uh, preacher. By contrast, what they did while critiquing the preacher, they, in fact, uh, started a, a new form of ideological, um, you know, uh, confirmation. Uh, of different, uh, you know, um, views and ideas in relation to nation and religion. Uh, for example, this preacher is called Moron. Uh, he should be stoned. He should be, you know, he is very deceptive. He is a sufferer of quarantine. And there's uh, lots of slangs. So you can uh, have a quick look how this um, a preacher was, uh, you know, critiqued and how the language itself of the criticism was full of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, full of you know, ideologies. For example, the, uh, the uh, preacher was, uh, you know, defined as a son of a whore, son of a whistling, beast in the shape of human. And rhetorically and hyperbolically exaggerated statements, you know, were used. And these uh, commentators, in fact, show different forms of ideologies about Muslim, Islam, Jews, Christians, and white Anglo-Saxons. For example, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates uh, are referred as Firingi or Firangi, the word in Hindi borrowed from Persian, referring to an European, especially British white person. 
The preacher has the eloquence to convert the PMs of China to, and New Zealand and president of the US, Donald Trump, into Muslim three times a day. Uh, the solemn support from the Almighty Allah again represent the ideologies against all religious sects in the world. Um, and they sarcastically, for example, one say that Allah destroy all the Jews, Christians, Hindus, and Buddhists in this pandemic of Corona and save us. And the names of the com commentators uh, show that the demographical and religious background of people, starting from Bangladesh to West Bengal, India, where the state language is Bangla and Islam and Hinduism. Both the nation of uh, Bangladesh and the Muslims, the nations are verbally, in fact, abused. And we see lots of transmodal memes, which allow the commentators to be creative in their violence in digital spaces. Um, this, in fact, shows the uh, uh, you know, history of the liberation war in 1971, where the Pakistanis, uh, in fact, um, uh, you know, created this wide genocide and people in Bangladesh have uh, lots of reservation hatred against the Pakistanis and these sort of uh, imams, in fact, reflected uh, those, uh, these uh, feeling, this feeling of hatred. So for example, here, the um, preacher uh, is um, explained as someone Pakistani uh, in, the heart, in his heart and soul. And the birth of the preacher, again, um, uh, this is a, it's a very objectionable uh, image, but again, this is uh, shown to, uh, uh, to express hatred to the, uh, to the preacher. But at the same time, in fact, this sort of meme has created new opportunities of uh, uh, you know, uh, nationalism and religion, uh, as we have observed. So we see that translingual digital discourses, there are lots of um, you know, different languages, images and emoticons, and uh, uh, they in fact uh, shows different narratives beyond the linguistic, socioeconomic and cultural and local boundaries of Bangladesh. And these translingual practices indicate individual and collective locatedness in fluid global spaces because these people are uh, borrowing different resources, linguistic resources and semiotic resources from different countries, different culture, uh, even though when they're very much located um, uh, you know, physically uh, in, in a, in a uh, peripheral country like Bangladesh uh, in South Asian context, the presentation and most importantly shows that the other side of the transmogal practices, the creative blending of local and global multimodal resources reflects individual and collective biases and ideologies and deliberate manipulation of resources too. And these people who are uh, occupying the digital spaces from Bangladesh and other parts of the world, they actively relocalize various you know, linguistic semiotic resources and they reinvent, they reincarnate, they sustain, they nurture um, you know, um, different sorts of monolingualism and monoculturalism. We find that, you know, some people are challenging the monolingualism and monoculturalism and monocorticism, but at the same time, when they do that, when they challenge them, you know, they also create a new forms of uh, monolingualism and monoculturalism. Uh, during COVID-19, uh, people also um, take the role of vigilante on digital spaces with the use of SLAs, servers and misogynistic expressions. The creative translingual practices of digital spaces seem to be the key sides. And in fact, they reproduce uh, violence, intolerance and injustice. And um, these uh, uh, digital discourses also instigated ideologies of the political, social and religious elites and social, cultural and national hierarchies um, and stratifications during COVID-19. In other words, we can say that these translingual practices that we observe on in digital spaces, um, they cannot be uh, only a form of creative use of language. Um, we cannot valorize them as a, as a symbol of heterogeneity or hybridity. We also have to look into these uh, different ideologies associated with this linguistic and uh, semiotic resources and try to understand how these resources are used to uh, sustain, to nurture, uh, different forms of ideologies. And translingual practices and digital spaces during COVID-19, in fact, um, require a multi-layered account uh, of languages, specifically with references to interlocutors and the multimodal linguistic and cultural resources which they draw from digital spaces. And we should also think about the history, the politics, the society, and other ideological associations when we do that. So that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Shaila. That was excellent. Um, very interesting. So we've got a lot of fertile ground to cover in the, the talk um, in the post discussion. Um,